good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Based on the time that we are assessing this material, welcome to Introduction to Computer, week 4. This is our final week for our one-month Introduction to Computer course. If you are assessing this material on YouTube, you can visit coolchart.com to uh, see the content. So on coolchart.com, if you go to courses, information technology, you will see the list of information technology courses. Then you can choose introduction to computer. So I've already introduced myself in the previous weeks, but my God has shown me this is your first time of assessing this material. So if you want to contact me, you have to log in. Then once you log in, there is a, a chat button here. So you click on chat with an instructor, then the chat box will open. Then you can send me a chat message. I can also reply you as well. So this is our final week. So what have we learned so far? So in week one, we learned about how we can um, boot the computer, how we can shut it down, how we can restart it, how we can connect, uh, put the computer to sleep. And now we can connect to storage devices. We talk about storage devices, the output devices. We talk about desktop, how you can change the background color and buy image of background color of desktop computer then week two we talk about file management how you can create a folder how you can delete a folder how you can copy a folder to a different location how you can cut a folder how you can copy a file to a folder and now you can cut a file to a folder and now you can open a file for example playing music or video or opening your other file and we also talk about how you can rename a file. And now you can delete a file. And now you can restore a deleted file. Then how you can empty recycle bin. And now you can transfer folder uh, file from either external drive like your uh, flash drive or pen drive or uh, CD or any kind of external storage device. So we've done all that. And then in the previous week, we also talk about software, how you'll be able to install your software application, especially on the internet. And as well as if you are installing from a folder, we indicated that the step is the same. Yes, that you have to look for the executable file so that you can double click on it to start the installation. The most executable files are named as setup. So you look for the setup file, then you can double click on it to start the installation. So the installation has instructions, so you just have to follow the instructions until you are done with the installation. So we are finally on the internet. So connecting to the internet. So the internet enables us to visit websites, chat rooms, uh, email, create an account, send email, and the rest. So as you've gotten your computer, you would like to use your computer to do those things. So that's why we have this final part of our course, so that you'll be able to use the internet on your computer. Now, there are many ways of connecting to the internet. Now, if you are using a desktop computer, in the old desktop computers, they don't have uh, a Wi-Fi uh, possibility to connect to the Wi-Fi. So if your computer is a desktop and it is not the latest version of desktop, then you may see that you won't have anything like like here, we have a Wi-Fi connection over here. On your computer, you may not have it, okay, because it doesn't have a Wi-Fi adapter. So if you really need to use the Wi-Fi because maybe you don't have the computer cable or the internet cable, then you need to use the USB wireless adapter. 
with the USB wireless adapter, when you connect it, it gives you the possibility for you to have access to wireless in the nearby. So once you connect this in, you'll be able to have something like this that you can connect to other networks which are available. So if you have it, you'll be able to see something like this so that you can see available network. Then you can connect to the networks that you wish to connect to. So if you are on a desktop and you don't have a wireless and you need to use uh, the wireless maybe on your phone or maybe a wireless nearby then you need to buy your USB wireless adapter it's, it's on the market so you just have to uh, look online and maybe order online so it has a USB port so once you get it you just connect this one to a USB port. In the previous week, we talked about what the USB port is. So uh, the port is on the other side of your computer. So if you, I believe you know because we've already learned about it in our previous weeks. So over here, you just insert this part into your USB port and you'll be able to connect, uh, have a wireless access. So that is for and if you have you can also buy a modem from your network providers. So your network providers also have modem. I think each of the network providers they have their own modem. So if you wish to, you can also buy a modem from them and also connect to your computer. So the modem also has a USB uh, slot. So you just insert it to your USB port then. That one too, we will talk about it shortly. Okay, so you're connecting by USB modem. So for a USB modem, you have your USB slots here, a connect USB connector. So over here, you just insert it into the uh, laptop or the computer. Now most of the modem, they have a spot where you can insert the SIM card. So you open the cover then you insert the SIM card. So in, in, in some, in the software, you can be able to top up your your data on, this, on the, their software application. But you can as well use your phone to top up the data. Then you can insert the SIM inside this modem. Then you can slot it onto your USB bar, the USB ports. So you just insert this USB port. And once you insert it, it will automatically, Windows will detect, will detect that device and it will automatically start the installation for the application. So it will install the appropriate software that you need to use your modem. So if you are using MTM, the application for the MTM modem will be installed for you. If you are using Vodafone, the same. So once you insert the Windows uh, operating system will automatically detected, then it will start the installation for you. So once the installation has been done, and you've also once you insert and the installation has been done, then now now is it. So once you there will be a, a place where you need to connect. So you click on connect and it will connect you to the internet. So far as you have data or credits on your modem. Okay, so that is it for the modem. Then we are on the connecting by an internet cable. Now if your computer has an internet cable, probably you have a internet service providers and they uh, maybe mounted a modem or a switch or a router somewhere. So you have the router around, you have a cable, so you have the internet cable. So the next thing is how to, how to connect to the internet, to that uh, modem or router or switch. Okay, so this is the internet cable. It has two uh, parts. So here you put one of the ends into your router 
or your switch then the other one goes into the computer okay so the intern there is internet port so you have to also look for it on the computer so you set that one here then you set this one into the, the switch or the router provided by your internet service provider so this is a router so the main internet goes into uh, this side so this one it should be provided normally your internet service provider they have a cable which uh, have this slot so you just insert that part over here then you will connect to this uh, to this port so you put your internet cable in any of these ports then that's one of the ends then the other end you put it into your computer so the other end you look for a, a port like this and most laptops they ground the icon for you so you know that this is an internet uh, connectivity so you just see so you can even see that this matches with the the map of your of the internet cable so there is something at the top here which it will go into this hole okay so once you connect both to the router and to the internet ports the um, the link uh, the the this one will start to blink the led in the in the internet cable will start to blink indicating that it has been able to connect to the internet once it has been connected to the internet you see that the internet connectivity icon will show so you have something like this okay now if you are connected to your router but you don't have internet access then you see this yellow you see this yellow if you are connected to the so even if you are connected to the uh, router and you don't, you don't have internet access you see this yellow uh, uh, icon over there indicating that you don't have uh, you are not connected to the internet no internet connection but if you are connected to the internet by the cable you see the icon like this then connecting by wireless so connecting by wireless maybe you want to use your phone to provide to provide a wireless access to your computer or probably your modem provided by the internet service provider also have a wi-fi on it so you also want to access it okay but so with that one if they have the wi-fi then they've already configured it for you so they will give you a, a, a password to the router so that one you just see available so before the connection if you are not connected to the wi-fi it will tell you that there are, are wi-fi is available in the, in the the power so that one there is no i want to disconnect my wi-fi so you can see how it looks like when there is no when I'm, i have not connected yet so if i haven't connected yet okay so if i haven't connected yet this icon will not be there so it, there will be wi-fi but there will be some a star at it okay so you can see something like a, a star indicating that you can connect okay there, there is a wi-fi in the situation where there is no wi-fi this one there will be red uh, alert which means that you cannot connect but if there is wi-fi to tell you that you can connect to it so so you just uh, click on it click on this file icon so once you click on it the available wi-fi will show then you just connect your device to it okay so you can connect 
applies to it. So if you want it to actually connect to you, you can also take this side to so wherever you want it. You can just connect to it. So we can, it minimizes my password, but if I uh, if it, that the first time I'm connecting it, you ask me of a password. So you should know the password of your router. And please uh, connect to a, a Wi-Fi which is open. It could be uh, this end. That could be at risk because an open uh, Wi-Fi it means your privacy is, is exposed because someone may just open it so that people can connect, then they can be uh, dropping their conversations or their package that they transfer on the internet. Okay, so we continue with the hotspot. So now if you want to use a, the, your phone to provide a Wi-Fi, then you need to uh, connect to your hotspot. So you need to activate your hotspot on your phone. And this, uh, this is a way to do that. So if you have any mobile device, whether iOS, whether iPhone or Samsung or Huawei or any other, they, they have the same features. Okay, so you just go to settings. So on your phone, you locate this icon, this settings icon. So you just click on settings. So once you click on settings, you click on more. So most often the tailoring uh, and portable hotspot is located on the or more. But if yours is located right on your setting, you just click on it. But most often it is on the, you need to click on the more before this option shows up. So if that's the case, you click on more, then you click on the Petrain and Portable Hotspot. So once you click on it, we need a portable Wi-Fi hotspot, so you also click on that one. So by default, it's a switch off. So if you need it, then you need to turn it on. So you just, uh, turn, uh, just click on the switch uh, icon to turn it on. So the name of your hotspot is shown at the left side of the switch button. So based on normally by default, it will use your uh, phone name. So you can change it to the name that you also want. Okay. So that's the name you connect to your computer. So if you are looking for the name of your Wi-Fi on your computer, you, you have to look at the hotspot name. So when you click, so for example, in this example on my phone, that's the name of my uh, hotspot. So, Ucha tablet. So, the name that you have on your hotspot is what shows over here. And someone's, someone has also uh, hotspot is lost on the phone. So, however, you name your hotspot is what shows over there. Okay, so this is the number image to show that so so you click on the more after more you click on thirteen and portable hotspot you click over here so when you click over there you have the portable hotspot so you also click over here Once you click over there, then this one will be turned off or on. So when it is a turn off, it, is, it will be gray. But if you turn it on, it becomes green. So if you just click on this uh, part, you turn it on or off. Then this is the name of the Wi-Fi. Okay. So this is the name of the Wi-Fi. Huawei P8 Lite. Okay. So that's the name of the Wi-Fi. So now if you want to change your Wi-Fi name and password, then you click on configure Wi-Fi hotspot. So when you click here, the next page shows the name you can change. So you can configure it here. So here you just enter your design name that you want to name your Wi-Fi. So you just change the name over here. Then you, you enter a password. 
over here. So the password that you want, you also enter it here. And the set password must be at least eight characters. So your password should be eight characters or more. Now, if you want to limit how many people can connect to your Wi-Fi, then you can also set it here. It can also be for security reasons, so that if you limit to one, you are the only one. If second person even have access to the password, you will not be able to connect because the limit is to go beyond the limit. Okay, so if you want to, you can set the maximum connection allow over also here. Once you finish, you just click on save. So once you save, then your Wi-Fi will be available. I remember that you need to also uh, turn on your data. If you are connected to the Wi-Fi but your data is off, you not have any internet access. So once you, you put on your hotspot, your data should also be on before you be able to connect to the internet. Okay. So like I have explained, if there is no uh, Wi-Fi available in the area, this place will be red. But if there is Wi-Fi, this place will to change. You can see some star over here. It means that you can connect. So once you click over the the list of the list of Wi-Fi available in the area will show. So you, you click any one of them. Then it will ask you password password if you want to automatically connect anytime the Wi-Fi is on then you can take this side and you click on connect so once you click it that's the first time it will ask you of your password so but if that's not the first time then it will be connecting automatically okay so sometimes you may share your hotspot with a friend or someone who just needed that help and you, you, you decided to share your hotspot with the person. Now, once the person finishes using your hotspot, you need to forget uh, your hotspot so that uh, the password on which is saved on the computer or on the phone or any way you share it, it will be removed from the person's device so that anytime your Wi-Fi is available and the person is in the neighborhood, the person won't be able to connect anymore. But if you don't do that, anytime the person is in the neighborhood, it will automatically connect to your uh, Wi-Fi network. So it's advisable that if you don't want the person to be always connected to your uh, Wi-Fi, once the person finishes using your hotspots, just uh, forget uh, the wireless network so that it will move or delete all the network wireless profile from the person's phone or computer. Now, how do you do that on the computer? So to do that, you have to right click on the wireless network that you want to forget. So for example, this one, if I want to forget this one, I have to right click. The last time we talked about right click. So when I right click, this shows the number of options. So I have to choose forget this network. Okay. So once you forget you forgot that network, the next time you will connect it will ask your password because it has to move the history. So the password that was previously stored has been deleted so the next time you connect or the next time your friend is connecting to the internet the password will no longer be there so the person will be the password so the person have to contact you again but if you don't do that without your knowledge the person can be using your wi-fi or your hotspot so anytime you share your hotspot with a friend Please remember to forget that network. You forget the so if you don't forget the person is in the neighborhood, your 
network. Sometimes you may not even be aware. So you try to forget your network on schedule. So you just right click on the network. So once you right click on it, it gives you forget option. So you just click on forget the, the network wireless network out the deleted from the uh, person's device. Okay. So now we are accessing the internet. If you want to use the internet to browse now, what how will you do that? Now we use browsers to connect to the internet. Probably you may be aware of certain browsers because when we're doing the installations, we use at least either Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge. We talk about it when we're installing the Google Chrome. We use any of these two. Okay. So these are the most popular browsers. So we have the Google Chrome. You have the Mozilla Firefox, then we have the Opera, then we have the Internet Explorer, then we have the Microsoft Edge, then we have the Safari for Mac computers. So those who use Mac computers, their browsers is called Safari. So that's what is being used. Okay. So in week uh, three, about the software installation, we install Google Chrome. So you can either use Google Chrome or you can use Microsoft Edge or Internet Explorer. So if you're able to install the Google Chrome, it means you have at least three browsers because Internet Explorer and Microsoft Edge are the key with the machine. So if you install Google Chrome, it means now you have three browsers. So if you wish to install any of these as well, you can also install them as well. But I think with Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge is enough for you. So, to visit a website, you need to use the address bar. So, you need to enter your the website name in the address bar. Okay. So, website name normally we have we call them domain name. So, their names have dot either dot com dot org dot net and so on. Sometimes so it may be the, the country abbreviation. So it can be .dh for Ghana, .fi for Finland, .us for US, .eu for the European Union. So all those things are what we call the domain name, which is the website name that you enter. Okay. Now, the first page that you visit when you, you visit a website is called home page. So, if you visit coolchart.com, for example, if you visit coolchart.com, so the page you will see will make it in a slash. The first page is what we call the home page. So, you say it's saying home page, home page, home page. When you go to the home page, that's what meant. First page you will see. So the first page is what is being referred to as the home page. When you visit a website. So the domain name, you just enter it in uh, the address bar. So this side is called address bar. So you just enter the domain name inside. So if you want to go to facebook.com, this way is facebook.com. If you want to go to twitter.com, this way you type in the, your twitter.com. Okay. And we continue. Now, when you are browsing on the internet, when you hover, Hoover is when you move the mouse around a text or an image. When you hover and it changes to the hand, it means it's a link. So you can click on that link. Okay, so for example, if I, you see that when here the cursor is uh, pointed, but when I hover on the image, it changes to a, so it means this is a link, so I can click on it. Okay, now, if you want to open a link in a new tab, so all these ones are called tab. So if you want to open it in a new tab, you can right click on the link. So when you right click, you can choose open link in new tab. So when you click open link in new tab, it will open a new tab for you. So if I click this one, you can see that it's open a new tab. So if you want to visit a web page in a new tab, 
You have to right click on that and you choose open the new tab. Then you can open the new tab. Okay. So you continue. So that is for link. So there is a link that you change the cursor things to the hand icon. So that you need that is a link. If you want to open the new tab, you just right click it and you choose open the new tab. And to go back to a previous page, you click on the back arrow. So we have back arrow, then we have forward arrow. Okay, so if you go back and you want to go forward again, then you use this arrow key. Okay, so that's for the back. So if you want to go back to a previous page, that you been, maybe you click on the link. So you want to go back to that previous page, use the back arrow key. So the back arrow icon, you just click on it. And if you want to come back again to the forward side, you click on the forward arrow. Now, if you want to refresh the page, maybe you want to reload the page again, then this icon, the refresh. So you click on this icon to refresh your, your page. Okay. Now, if you want to close a page, you use the, the, this one, the cross. So that cross, you just click on it to close a page. So, for example, if I want to close this tab, when I click on it, the tab closes. So, that is it. So, you use the cross for the tab. Now, if you want to open to open a new tab, you use it. So, when you click over here, a new tab will open. So, you can type whatever you want to. So, if I, for example, go that one. So, I can just click here. So, to open a new tab, tab told you all these ones are called tabs. So to new one, you just have to click on plus and click on the plus. It's a new tab for you. Okay, so you can back, you can forward, you can refresh, you can close, you can new tab. Okay. Now to open a new window. Maybe you are using a, uh, a browser and you want to open a new window. So maybe you want to open a different window aside what you have. Then you have to right click on the on the uh, taskbar. So like you've seen in your previous lecture, these ones are called taskbar or the toolbar. Okay. So if you want to use any of them, so if, if, you, if you have, if you have those ones over here. So here in the browser where you want to open a new tab, you just right click on it. So when you right click on it, the options will come. So we have new window. So you can choose a new window. Then it opens a new window aside this window that you are using. It will open a new window for you. So you can have two windows. So now if you have two windows, give them by putting your on the browser so you choose which of them you want to move so if you want to move to this one you just click on that one then you can see the browser okay. if you want to move on move you use this one then on it then that will be the active uh, browser okay so yes this one doing maybe you want to establish on only one window and then you want to do something else so you want to move that different window then you can do that so to open it you put your cursor the, the browser icon at the task to then you right click and you choose new window. You can choose new window. So you can open as as you want. Now to get additional features of browser more okay. So the more icon varies from browser to okay for this uh, Microsoft page. So, so the more is horizontal. For Chrome, it is a article three, and for for Mozilla, it's three uh, lines, three lines. Okay, and for Opera, it's more. So on browsers, if you want additional features, you need to click on the more icon. So for example, this one. If you click on the more icon, now if you want to see your downloads. 
if you want to see things that you downloaded, you click on here. If you want to see websites that you visited, you can click over here. If you want to print something, you can click over here. If you want to have setting, you can also click here. So in the settings, you can configuration. So maybe you want to change the path where download should go. Then you can also do that in the setting. Okay, so in the browser you are using, you can check the settings available. Then you can. So here in the Mozilla, in the Microsoft Edge, we have like printers where you can manage your printers. Then we have you can manage your downloads so by default this is the location where my anything i download on the internet is a folder to be saved to so if i want to change the folder you just click on over here so you can just click over there to change the folder to the folder where you want so if you change it then any new things will be downloaded they will all be going to that folder so if maybe you want to save uh, that save downloads in based on the browser names too, then you can create folders for them. And over here you can change. Okay. Now if you want to set uh, this as a default browser too, you can choose which one will be your default browser. So if you, if you want to set Google Chrome as a default browser, if you go to setting, there will be default browser setting you can choose over here. So once you choose, then that one will also be your default browser. So any link you visit or you open maybe in a document or anything, anything relating to link, it will, it will be using this browser as your default one. Okay, so those are the setting features. So each browser have their own setting features. So you can just click on the more icon and you can see what additional features the browsers have and you can just uh, try them out. Now, to minimize the browser, we use the minimize icon. So why do we minimize? Like we learned in the previous week, to minimize the software, it makes the, the software or window disappear on the desktop even though it is still running so it will just disappear so like this one if i minimize this one you see that it has disappeared on my computer but that doesn't know that it is off so anytime i want it i can get them at the taskbar so i can get it back at the taskbar by click uh, hovering on the the icon at the taskbar so now once i hover on the was allowed to show me the two windows so I can choose which of them I want to. So once you click, then you become to minimize my. So that's minimize. Then there, to maximize the browser, to maximize normally is for resizing your your browser. So if you click here, it will resize to smaller. Then when you click again, it will resize to the full full screen. So the mouse man, when you click, the window changes, so you can adjust it to the way you want, or you can make it full screen again. Now printing the web, you've seen this already, but you can talk about. So to print a web, you can use the short, short key, Control P. So if you press Control P, so if you press Control P, the dialog for printing will show. So you can, if you have a printer connected, then you can choose the printer name here. So here, this side will be your printer name. So you choose your printer name over here. But if you don't have any printer connected, you can change the the, the this side to save as PDF. So you can save as PDF so that you can copy it to your external drive. You can take it to the cafe or a printer nearby. So here you can use save as PDF. So if you use save as PDF, it will save your file the what the what you are supposed to print as PDF. Then you can 
Just save it on your computer. Okay. So once you use save as PDF, then you just click over here. So when you click over here, it will ask you where you want to save that. To. So you just uh, choose where you want to save your file. Then you just save your file to that location. So you can copy it to your pen or your flash drive and you can print it out later. Okay. So but before you have to wait so the preview is loading. So once it finished then you can see us. You can see us. So in the save us you can choose the location where you want to save your your page. Between you choose where you want to save. So if I want to save it in my downloads, or if I want to save it on desktop, I just click desktop over here. So last time we showed we learned about drives and folders. So whichever folder you want to go to, you can just choose it and just click on save. Does it save and save as it saves it as PDF. So Anytime you want to print it out, then you can just go to that file and you can copy it to your pen drive and you can print it out. Okay, so we've done printing. Then you can as well click on the more icon. So, like I explained to you, each browser in the more icon they use. Some they use vertical three dots, others use uh, horizontal three dots. Let's use the lines so based on whatever the browser is using, then you, know, you should know where the more is. So, once you click on more, there is also a print option here. So, you can also click on the print as well to print if you wish. Okay, so downloading. So, we talk about downloading. In uh, our previous week, so to download, you just go to google.com, then you search what you want to download, then you, wherever uh, the page you visit, you look for download button and just click on download. So once you click on download, the, the file will be downloaded, so you it will save at the default location by default more browsers save the downloads in the uh, downloads folder so if you want to look for something which you downloaded the first place you can go is the downloads folder so but you can also as well change the path to where your download uh, location should go like i showed you on the on the Microsoft Edge. So in the Microsoft Edge, if you go to settings, so in the settings, there is a downloads where you can change your path where you want your download to be uh, dropped to wherever you want. But by, that, by default, it saves it in the downloads folder. Now we are on creating email. So now we are so email address is an electronic mailbox that makes it possible for you to send a message and also receive a message and it uses the ads format so in the email address if somebody asks you what is your email address then the person will be expecting that you mention something at something maybe at gmail.com at yahoo.com at coolchat.com at coolchatmedia.com so at hotmail.com at outlook.com okay so in the email we normally use at this at symbol okay so normally it will be your email name then at then the domain name so if you are using gmail then it will be your username for your gmail at gmail.com if you are using yahoo then it's going to be at yahoo.com if you are using uh, outlook then it's going to be at outlook.com or it can, um, can also be uh, hotmail.com. 
and so on. So these are examples of email address. So we have Joseph at domain name dot com. We have a date at day nineteen ninety at example dot com. We have coffee at yahoo dot com. We have avina ninety five at gmail dot com. So all this one makes it valid uh, emails. The ads and the domain names. So this one makes it a valid email address. The number of popular email service providers, but the most popular one is the Gmail. Then we have the Yahoo. Then we have the Microsoft Outlook. Then we have the Yahoo, which we can find at Yahoo.com. We have the Gmail, which we can find at Gmail.com. We have the iCloud Mail, also, which we can find at iCloud.com. Then we have the Yandex Mail, we can find it over here. But this week, example, you will be creating a, a, a Gmail account because that's what most people use. That's the most popular uh, email account. So you can also as well create it in your Gmail. So to create a Gmail account, you just visit google.com or gmail.com. So if, if you are in Google, it gives you all options of their services, but if you go straight to Gmail, then that is their email uh, service, their email service, so you can directly have access to the email parts of their services. Now, businesses and um, businesses can also purchase uh, email services from these services, from these uh, email uh, service providers. But if you are, have a business and you have your own website, which you have your own domain name, most of the hosting service providers, they also have an email service embedded in their services. So you can have your email at your domain name. So for example, kucha.com, we also have our own domain names like info at kucha.com or info at kuchatmedia.com. So whatever your company website might be, then they will also for sure have an email address which connects to their domain name as well. So creating of an email address. So we will be using uh, we will be creating Gmail accounts, but creating of an email address is similar to all of them. So the same most of them have the same information: your first name, your last name, your the username for your email, then your password, which might be at least a minimum of eight characters, and so on. So most of them, they are almost the same. Okay, so to, to, to create an account, you can visit gmail.com. So you can visit our gmail.com. So when you visit your gmail.com, there is a login and create account. So if this is for you to create an account, click on the create account button. But if you already have an account, you just enter your email address or your phone, then you can log in. So whichever one, but now we are creating it, this is the first time, this is our first time. So we are creating an email address, so we need to click on create account. So we click on create account. So is that create for myself, create for my business. So this is for myself. So I click on create for myself. So if you want that for your business too, then you choose create for my business. Okay. So then you can enter your first name. So your first name is the name you are given. And that's the first name your parent gave to you. So my first name is God. Your last name is your surname. So my last name or my surname is Ashon. Okay. Now the username. The username is a unique name that identifies you with your uh, email service providers. So we are now at gmail.com. So it's a name that I have to use that no one else has used. And the username should contain letters and numbers and uh, 
and periods. So we can have letters A, B, C, D, up to Z, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on, and the full stop. So these are the only three characters you can have. So we can't have underscore, we can't have a space. So all those characters, so these are the only uh, three characters. So you think of something that uh, you, that you can use for your username. Okay, so most often people use their first name and their last name. They combine the two to form their uh, email address. Others to short, short uh, some parts of their names and join them then to make the email address. Then, so based on some also add the, the, the some figures to the to the if it has already been taken, then if I join my the first three of my names, so I'll have something like this. Okay. So now if I check in, it has been taken. If it's available, so it has been taken. So this user name is taken already. So someone is using gmail.com. So I can't use it. So in that case, I need to add something to it. Okay. So if I choose to add go anything to it, let me check if it's still available. It has also been taken. Okay. So what can I do? Okay. So I'll make it. Uh, maybe the year, so we are in 2020. So maybe, maybe, maybe then we add 22. Okay, let's take it. So we add another 22. So God has 2020. <laughs> it's also taken. Okay, so maybe I add the month we are, we are in October. So, okay. Since my date is available, okay, this is not complain. So this is available. So you try them by which it should be a name that is easy for you to remember. And also, when you mention it to people, it should not be too difficult for them to remember. So they can, they shouldn't be easy to forget. Especially if you give to your uh, close friends, if it's something difficult for them to remember, if they don't write it down. It will be difficult for them to remember your email address. So you try to use a name that is also easy to remember, but it has not been used by anyone else. Okay. Then you choose a password. So the password must be at least eight characters or more. So you can choose a password which is eight characters or more. So and for a word of caution. Please don't use your phone as a password. If you want to use your phone, add something to it. Because if somebody wants to hack your email address, the first thing they will try is your phone number. If the person knows you, if the person knows you, the person will try your phone number first. So if, you, if I know your email address and I want to check if I can log into your email, the first thing as a hacker will try is to check and use your phone number to check if that's the password you use. So if you decide to use your phone number, please add some things to it so that it makes it difficult for somebody, a hacker or somebody who don't have rights to your account to log in. And also, don't use things which are public. If you use things which are public, it means others know that's about you. For example, if you have a daughter or a son and you use their name as your password, those are the few things people will be trying to figure out if that's what you might use for your password or your date of birth and the rest. So try to, even if you use those things, add, combine them so that it will be difficult and make it more difficult for somebody to guess your password okay so once 
you've entered the password. Now, the password here must be the same as the password here. This is to check that you haven't made any type of error. So, the password you enter here should be the same in the confirm. Okay, so the confirm password should be the same as your password you've entered here. So, they will check you with match before you to proceed. If it match means what you type here, you are aware that's why you type the same thing here. So, once you fill your first name, your last name, in choosing the username, as we said, the username is supposed to be unique. It must contain letters, numbers, and all full stop. So if you want to, you can add full stop to your uh, email address. It also works so anyhow you want it. So some two may want to use, join their last name in the first name with a, with a full stop. So for example, if I decide to use Godwin dot Ashon. Check with Sabu Labu. Okay, this one is taken. Okay, so that one is also taken. Okay, so I'll go back to my previous one. Three of my three letters of my first and last name, the month. So once you finish, you just click on uh, this. Now you can click on here to check to make sure that the passwords are correct. But since, since you are entering the same thing here, then you can just, if it's not the same, then it means you, at least what you type here is not the same. So you, you try to check if, if that's what you wanted to enter. Okay. But if there is no one at behind you, then you can click over here to check what password you use. But if you are at a public place, then you try to check also if your upper key is on. Because sometimes you may think you were typing in lower case, not knowing it was in capital uh, letters. Because uh, passwords are case sensitive. So you check if your upper case is on. So if your upper case is on, normally your caps uh, uh, key, your caps key will be, uh, will, there will be the leg over there will lie. So it should tell you that the caps uh, lock is on. Okay. So you check all those things so that you make sure that you enter the password that you wish. Other than that, when you are logging in next time, you have difficulty in logging. In. Okay. So. Now, but if you are not at a public place and you are alone, you can click here to check if that is the password you wish to enter. So once you finish, you just click on next. So if everything is okay, then it moves to the, uh, the it moves. Okay, so they said my password is too big, so I have to try a different password. Okay. So, these two sessions is for you to be able to recover your email address. So, sometimes you may forget your uh, password. So, you need to either enter a phone number or an email address. Remember, this part is very, very crucial. If you already have an email address, you can enter the email address here. It's not necessary that it should be a Gmail account. It could be any email address. Now, they normally use this one so that they can send you a verification code in that email address, which you can use to change the password. Okay. And they are, if you are using the phone, the phone too, they can send you an SMS of the verification code, which you can use to change your password. So, this tool is for resetting your password if you've forgotten your password. So, it 
they are very very important so you just have to, have to choose one of them okay so if you decide to choose the phone then but I will choose an email address. If I, if I enter a phone here, yeah, if you wish, it's, it's like you say, it's, it's a, both of them are optional, but it's for you to be able to recover your, to recover your messages. Just enter something that your if I enter your phone number. Most of them, when you enter your phone number, it they verify your phone. They verify your phone to check if it's really a valid phone number or not. So you make sure you enter a valid phone number. So if I enter something like. Enter your date of birth. So the date of birth, your year, your day, the month, and the year, then your gender, whether you are male or female, then you choose that one also here. Now if you don't want to say it, so there is an option you can say rather not say. So any of them that you wish. So once you've entered your phone number, then you have entered a recovery email. You can enter both. So for example, if I want to say my recovery email can be info at com. Uh, let's say God. This and that. So any of them, if I forget my password, any of them I can use to reset my password. So when you are creating your email, make sure that I, at least you have one of these so that you can be able to reset your password. And many a time, people are not able to log in into their email when they have important information because they forget to uh, set any one of these. Remember to set at least one of them so that you, you can reset your password in case you forget. Then once you are done, you just click on next. So the next step is to agree to the uh, terms. So you just click on agree. So it seems like we can take our So that's your email. So you can customize your email and change your profile picture to the important email. You can get it from mobile phone. So if you are you have your you can just connect it and, and download the Gmail app. Okay. So by default, Gmail gives 1.15 gigabytes of space that you can use email account. Okay, now this is and sending an email. So I think the next one. Now we've created our email. All the that I was explaining. So I've explained the username. I've explained the last name. I've explained the password. The security question confirmed. I've 
explain your full recovery in your abnormal date of birth gender and are you to be in your terms and sending in what so we are now on sending in what so to send an email you click on the compose button once it goes to the spaces where you can enter your inbound details so we have the two so the two is the email address where you want to send the email to so if you have maybe these emails now if you are sending the email to multiple recipients you can separate them by comments so if you have more than two uh, people you want to send the email to so each of the emails you separate them by comment so all the emails will go to them separately so this person for example if you have this as to your two this the email will go to this person at the same time this person at the same time that person so they will go to them separately now the cc uh, is an abbreviation for carbon copy so what is it used for so for the cc when you send the email uh, you copy the email to other people. So all those emails that you copy, those that you copy, it will show that they, they were copied in the email. So their email address will be there, showing that they were copied. Okay. So maybe you want to send an email to a particular person, and you want your boss or another person to see, to get a copy of it. And the one you are sending the email to, you also want him to know that you send a copy to those uh, uh, recipients. So those that we want them to be aware, both side, both to the one we are sending to, and also for the one you are copying, so that they know that you send the email. We use a copy option. So when you click on copy, you can enter the email you want to copy your uh, email to. So that you we can separate them by comments for multiple recipients. So if you are copying from more, more than, you just separate them by comments or semicolon. So either a, a semicolon or comma. So either a comma or a semicolon. So each of the emails, you just separate them by any of these. They, they will all work. Now the BBC. So BBC. This is also copied. But here, the copy is different. But it says blind carbon copy. So blind means that we sent a copy, but we didn't indicate that we sent a copy to the uh, in the inbox. So others will not see that we sent a copy to the others. Okay. So the difference between if we BBC these people, other people who are receiving the email will not know that we sent we sent copies to these people. Okay, so that's the difference between the BBC and the, the CC. So the CC, all those who receive the email will know that we copied these people. Okay, and for the BBC, it doesn't show that they were copied. So you will not be aware that they were copied. Now why do you need this part? Then the copy, if you want the people to be aware that you copied the others, then you need to use this part. Because, for example, if your boss asks you to send an email to someone, then in order for you, your boss to you know you send the email, you can send the email to the person and copy your boss. So the person will also know that your, your boss got a copy of your email as well. The, your boss will also be aware that you send the email because you get a copy of the email. So, is there two? Let's enter. Okay, for example, if I'm sending to info at schoolchart.com, schoolchart.com. Okay, now if, like I said, for multiple recipients, you separate them by comma. So, comma, then info at schoolchart.com. But if it's to only one person, if it's to only one person, you just end over there. But if you are sending to more than one person, you 
can separate them by a comma. to add a copy. You want to add a copy. So maybe you want to send a copy to maybe Godwin. Okay, and if you want to send a blind copy to maybe to another person, maybe you can do it. So whoever you want to send a copy to, you just then the subjects here. The subjects here will be the subject of your writing. So this can be my first New York. Okay, so you can write written, so you can just write the first and the Okay, so now here. So over here, if you want to send attach a file, you click here. So when you click on it, when you click on it, it directs you to wherever you. Do. So you just browse over here to any part where you want to attach a file. Okay. Any part, any part you want to attach a file. So, let me, for example, okay. so let me say, for example, I want to attach this file. I just click on it. Then you watch the attachment. Watch the attachment also. It gets to the, it completes. Then you complete it to the end. Now, if you want to ch change your mind, you want to delete, you just click over here. But if you are okay with it, then you can just send the inbox. So once you are done, you just send your inbox. So you click on send. So they send to their options. So you check which of the options. This one, if you want to schedule a send, so you want to give a particular time when the email should be sent, you can click over here. So with this one you can choose when the email should be sent so you just so you can select a date and type so you can choose any of them but if you are want to send now you just click on send okay so once you send if you decide to change your mind then you can undo here want to view the best the message you sent you can click over here now you just go over here so inbox is the emails that you receive so all the emails that you've been receiving will be in an inbox now if you haven't read the inbox the inbox will be read will be read and the total number of unread messages will be over here so messages will not read but once you open the inbox so when you click on inbox, the list of emails you have will show over here. So you can click on the ones which have not been read yet will be bamboo. So you can click on them to read. So when you click on it, it opens the inbox. So you can read the inbox. So once you read the inbox, the, uh, the alert changes. So you can see that there is no unread. Okay. 
to that's a welcome message from Google in June here. So that's a welcome message from Google. Okay, so you can click on it. Okay. Now, if you send an email and the email address does not exist, if the email address does not exist, you get a response. There will be a, a field delivery that it will be sent to your inbox so you know that the message was not delivered. Okay, so in this example, it says it couldn't find this email address. So it couldn't find this email address, so the email, the email was not delivered. Okay, so if you send an email address and the email address doesn't exist, then you get a response that the, the email was not delivered. So you can ask the person to verify the email address. Maybe the person left something out, or the person has not created the email address yet. So when you contact the person, the person can verify whether the email address he or she gave it to you is correct or not. Now to check emails that you've sent, and click on the send. So here it shows a list of emails that you sent. Okay, so this was the email I sent. So you can over here. If you want to delete, you can delete over here. If you want to mark us on red, you can do it over here. Now, if you are typing an email and you didn't send and you exit, they will put it in the, the draft to be saved as draft. So all images that you've composed that you didn't send, they will be in draft. So anytime you want, you can just click on them to resend if you wish. Now, sometimes if people send you an email and it's suspicious, well, Gmail or any other email providers are suspicious of the email address, they will put it in the spam. So if somebody sends you an email, and you are you didn't see it in the inbox. You can go to the spam folder. You can go here and check if probably the email has been sent over there. So when you click, if there are emails in the spam, you see the list of emails there. Just like uh, you, you saw the email in the in the inbox. Okay. Now, when you delete emails, when you delete emails too, they are first of save in the trash bin. So they are first of all save here. After 30 uh, days, if you haven't deleted, then it will be deleted automatically. So that's basically that one. So you should be able to send an email, read an email. So you check your inbox, you read an email. So when you see your list of emails, you just click on the one you want to read. It reads. Now if an email has an attachment. If you send an email or you receive an email which has an attachment, you just click on the file to view it or to download or wherever you want it. Okay, so if you send and to check, for example, if this this one when you click on this download, it will download the file. So if you receive an email with an attachment when you click here it will download the file. Now if you want to forward and reply an email, you just click on this icon. So maybe somebody sends you an email and you want to reply, you just click over here. Now this one if you want to forward the email to another person, you can also click over here. If you want to print, you can click over here. If you want to delete so all the options are over here. So based on what you want to do and the option you want to click. So the more more icon gives you more option. So to compose an email, you click compose. Now if you have an email, many emails and you want to search, you can search by a keyword. Okay, so we can, sometimes you can search by an email address. So you see that these are the emails I sent. So I said 
the legends are popular so when you click it shows you uh, and you know that a, a, a message that associates with that keyword so it lists all the messages that associate with that keyword so if you have many lists of windows you can get search to those keywords either the email address or some keyword that you will be able to filter the email content okay so basically that is it for email address if i'm correct that may be the end of our course let me browse through the content and see if there is something i need to talk about in addition to all that i've said if not just take a quick revision now the end of the course okay so before i leave you can see the subjects the messages where you can get message where you can have attachment okay and we will talk about it in the folder okay so when we were doing uh folders we didn't talk about zipping the folder but when you are sending an email, this part is very, very important because in an email where you are sending an attachment, it contains many files. If you do not want to send them one by one, you can zip all of them in one folder. So you can put all the, all the files in one folder, then you zip them. To zip them, you just make them all one you compress it so they all become one file so when the person downloads the file the person can unzip it so when the person unzip it it it's it, it makes the files uh, exposed so they can be accessed from the folder okay so to zip uh, to zip a folder the step is just simple To zip a folder, you just have to go to the folder. So, for example, if we have, let's see, we have a folder that that's a desktop. Okay, so last time, okay, this is the last time. Okay. So maybe I have okay. So let's say for example, this one has already been used, so I will delete this one. So let's say for example i want to send this folder okay now if i want to send them one by one it means i have to open the folder then i, I send the file inside or i open the folder then i send the file inside i open the folder then i send the file inside but that would be very uh, tedious to do so to make things easy i can just zip this one so to zip the folder you right click the folder the last time we talked about right click the right side of the mouse so you right click the folder then you choose send to so in the send to you choose a compress folder so you choose this option so this option will zip the folder uh, your folder so when you press this okay to send a zip copy of your of your folder in the same way you have the main folder so this is a zip uh, uh, folder so now you can you, you can attach this uh zip uh folder in your inbox so you can send it as one so the one that receives it will also uh, access it then the person can 
also unzipping to see the content. So, okay. So in our compose, if we decide to compose an email and send it as an attachment, so that one, so we can just attach. So in this case, if we want to attach one, okay. If we want to attach. So, in this part, we need to attach our zip file. Okay. So, here, so now let's attach our zip file. Okay, so that's a zip file. So, if you just send a message, then the person just download the zip file. So when the person downloads it, now to unzip the file, maybe somebody else sends you the file. So if you unzip it, so for example, if we don't have this folder here, and we have our zip file. Okay. So if we have our zip file, now how do we unzip it? And to unzip it, you click on the zip file. Now at the top, you see extract. So at the top of your explorer, your explorer file explorer, you see extract. So you click on extract. So when you click on extract, there's extract all. So you click on extract all. And the extract all, you can choose the folder where you want it to. Uh, be saved. Okay, so if you want it to be saved in the same place where there's a zip file, file is, you just click extract. But if you want to direct, take it to somewhere else, you just click on browse. So in the browse, you choose the folder or the directory or the drive where you want to save your uh, extract uh, file. So, when you, so once you choose that one where you should go, you just click on extract. When you click on extract, then the zip uh, file will be extracted, then you get your folder back. So you get the actual folder you sent uh, or you receive from the email. Okay. So if you have a, a file in so many folders and the size is not so huge because the email, the email there's, they have limits of files you can send. So if it's a zip, you will be allowed to send. But if your, your folder content does not exceed, then you can send. Now, to check the property of your the size of your data of your file, you can right click of your folder. You can right click your folder, then you choose properties. So when you choose property, okay. So when you choose property, you should, should if you show the size we have on the on the on the menu or at the address. So based on the size, you know if it's beyond uh, the allowed size of Gmail or not. Okay. So to first the content of your uh, folder does not exceed. You can zip it as one file. And you can just attach it. So if you explain the zip to zip a folder, you just right click the folder, then you choose send to, then you choose compress folder. So the compress folder will be a zip folder, which you can browse. So now it becomes the zip file, one file. So you can just attach it over here and you can enter your email details and send. So when the person receives it, then the person can download it and also extract it. Like we did, we did with the extraction. So for the extraction, you just click on the file. You just click on the file. Then at the top of your 
file explorer to just click on your zip file at the top of your file explorer there is extract you choose extract or to the extract or you choose the uh, where you want to save it so if you want to save it where it is now you just click on extract if you want to save it somewhere you click on browse and you, you navigate to wherever you want to save it okay so that's it for keeping and unzipping a folder reading Okay, so logging out of your email account. So logging out of your email account. Now to log out of your email account, you have to click on the circular image with your letter inside. If you have your profile picture, that will be your profile. Your, your, your picture will be here. But by default, if you don't have a, a picture, then your listen will be here. Just your first letter of your your first letter of your first name will be will be in this uh, circular uh, image or circular uh, button. So you just click on it. So when you click on it, there is sign out. So there is sign out. So you just click on sign out. So once you sign out, if you want to add another account to you, you can click add another account. So you can have so many um, Gmail accounts. So you just click on add account. But if you want to sign out, you just click on sign out. So that will sign you out of your Gmail. Okay. So now after signing out, resetting your password. So in case you've forgotten your password, in case you've forgotten your password, so if you've forgotten your password, how do you reset it? So in your Gmail, so on the home page of Gmail, you enter your, your Gmail account. So you enter your Gmail account. Where you have a login, you enter your Gmail account. So when you click on this, this this page will come. So once you enter your Gmail account or your phone number, this page will come. So now you click on forgot password. So you have to click on the forgot password so that it will help you to reset your password. Now it will ask you to enter the last password that you remember. So if you don't remember the last password, you just click, uh, click on try another way. Now this is what I was telling you about. Uh, this was what I was telling you concerning the uh, either email account or your phone. So you should at least set a phone or email account for verification purpose. So if you don't have those things, when you forget your password, it will be very difficult for you to uh, reset your password. Okay. So if you have both phone and your uh, email address, so if you come to your email address and the email or alternate email that you use, maybe you don't remember that one, it's a password, you want to choose a phone, then you also try another way, you go on try another way, then it gives you a different option as well, which will be the phone that uh, you use. So in the phone, you get a verification call, so when you click on test, it will send you, uh, it will send a, a code to this phone number, so you can, uh, Check that phone number, then you enter the code that it sends to. Okay, so here I was given some code, so you just enter the code that you were given. Okay, so once you enter your code and it is correct, you just click next. So once it is correct, they give you 
an interface where you can enter a new password. So you just enter a new password to that uh, page. Once you are done, you just go. Okay. Okay. So in your new password, you, you can't use it. The new password has the your, the old password you use. So you just. Just enter new password. So once it's okay, then it will reset it for you. Okay, so it has reset. Okay, so that it has been reset for you. So that is it. So you are creating your account please remember to add either an email address or phone so so that because this is what you use to reset so when you, you want to reset when you enter your email address and you click next there will be forgot password so you just click on it so if the first option is the email option that comes and you don't want to want your phone option. You just click try another way. So once you click on try another way, the phone option comes. So the phone option, it will give you the phone that you added to that account. So it will be, there will be asterisk to it and the last digit will show. So you enter that phone, you, you click uh, test. So it will send you a test message to your phone. So you just enter the test message, the, the, the code that you, you, you receive, then you click on this. So once the code matches, you will be given a page where you enter a new password. Then you confirm the new password. Then you just change the password to that new password. Okay. So if you haven't added your email address and your phone, you won't be able to reset your email. So please, I'm, I'm still emphasizing on it is very very important so if you create an account you make sure you add those things so you don't lose your email address okay so i think if let's try if there is nothing else to talk about we'll just bring this one for the session okay so we are searching on the internet so there are some few things that I would like to address on the searching on the internet. So we've done how to download on the internet. So it's similar to searching for something on the internet. So when most of the search engines, we have Google, we have Yahoo, we have Bing, we have uh, Yandex.com, but the most popular one. So you just visit the website, then the Google Doc, you type in what you want to search. So if I want to search what is computer, if I want to search what is computer. Now, when you search and there are a list of search results, now it's advisable not to just click on this. When you click on this, this page will disappear. So the next time you want to check the other option, you need to go back, come back to this page again. So to avoid that, you can right click on the link and choose open a new tab. So when you click open a new tab, new tab opens for you. So the new tab that opens. So the new the new tab that opens 
you can just see your result over there then you can read over there. so when you read and that's what you want you can just come to this so if that's not what you want you just come to the tab then you can just you can come to the other tab and You can come to the other tab and try and try the other one. If that's the first one is not the one you want. Okay. Now to copy a test, you put Kesa at the beginning of the of your test. Then you drag your mouse. So you click, you click on the left side. Then with other fingers you drag your mouse. So you drag your mouse like this. So if you want to copy downward to you just be moving the mouse. With the other finger you just be moving and dragging the mouse. So this is what we call select. Okay, so once you've selected your file, then you can right click it. You can right click it, then you choose copy. Now, if you want to print, you can print. If you want to copy, you can just click on copy. Okay. Now, if you visit a web page and you want to print and you, you, you click on print, now this one prints the entire page. But if you want to print only a section of a page, then you have to highlight, so you have to select the places where you want to print. For example, if I want to print this one, I have to highlight it. Then I can right click on the selected test. Then I can choose print. So this one will print only the ones that I have selected, not the entire page. Okay, so if you want to uh, print for page, you need to press or for highlight the portion where you want to print. So once you highlighted it, you can right click it and choose print. So when you choose print, only the session where you highlighted will print. So after highlighting, I click in the where you you've highlighted, then you choose print. So only the session where you highlighted will be printed for you. Okay. So as you can see, only this part will be printed. So if I have a printer, I'll just print. If I want to save, I'll just save, change it as save as PDF, then I can save it. Okay. Now the next thing I want to uh, your attention is that now if you copy something from the internet, a web page, and you paste it directly into a word document. So let me show you. So if I have a word document. I copy the text directly into my Word document. Now, if you copy directly into your Word document, the style on the page, what the bold, the font type, and the rest, they will all be copied to your your clipboard. So, you know, if you go and paste it into your Word document, all those styles will be Will be there some that may be link will be underlined and the rest so if you don't want those uh if you don't want those ones to be shown on your on your lesson you need to paste this one in the notes part so you first of all paint uh, paste uh, your your copied text to a notepad, the notepad will remove all those stars. So from notepad, then you can go and copy it into your Word document. So if I copy my test over right here, okay. So as you can see, it's having the same uh, font type and the the bold and the rest. Over there, but if I don't want it all, I want it to be a plain text. 
uh, first of all, how to copy and paste it in a notepad. So you need to search for notepad, or if you already already open your notepad, and open it. So you just open your notepad. Notepad is a software on every Windows application. It came by default. So you just copy your text onto your notepad. Then from notepad you can uh, copy it. So like we studied that. To copy everything, we use Control A, which is Control O. So Control A will copy, highlight everything. So you to highlight everything, then you can Control C, or you can right click. Either you right click or Control C. If you right click, to you can just copy or cut. So however you want it. So if you want to cut, to you can just cut. Control X is cut, or you right click and you choose cut. Okay, so if I undo this one, okay, so now, now if I paste what I have there, you see that now it is, of, it doesn't have any, uh, star. So now I can style it the way I want. So in the previous one, if it has a link, there will be link inside and the rest. Okay, so if you don't want it and you want the playtest, make sure that you paste it in the note part first. Then from notepad you can cut or copy from notepad and come and paste it into the word document. Okay, so that's it. That's for the searching. So in the searching tool, if you want to save, copy an image, let's right click on the image. So for example, if I want to copy this image, I can right click it. Okay, if you want to save the image, you use save as save image as then you can save the image. Maybe you want to save the image to your phone. So we right click, you choose save the image as, then you can direct it to the parts of your computer where you want to save your image. Now, in the Word document, you are using Word document too, you can copy. Okay, so if I want to save from desktop, I just click desktop and I save. Okay, now if I'm using Word document, I can just copy. If I'm using Word document. I can also copy and just right click, then copy image. Then I can come and paste in my Word document. So paste is Control V, uh, or you can right click, choose paste. Only one you want. So you can right click and choose paste. So either you choose this one or Control V. So that is it. Okay. So, so you can save the images of your uh, on the website. You can copy the image of your website and paste it in your editor, your test editor. If you are doing documentation, okay. In in how to use the Office uh, tool, we will learn it in our Office Microsoft Office tools where we learn our web document, which is this application. Then we will also learn. Uh, PowerPoint, and you also learn how to use the Excel to do some calculations and also to do some charts. So, if uh, I hope you've enjoyed the introduction to the computer course, so now if you are, you can use the computer very well. You can open a software application, you can create a folder, you can save things in it, you can open uh, files and the rest. Then. You can connect to the internet, you can search, you can download. These are the basic things you should be able to do. You can create an email, you can send an email, you can make attachments when you are sending an email. Okay, so all these things are the basic things you need to know in computer. So that's the idea of the introduction to computer. We talk about components, we talk about transferring set tests to web than that and we said if you don't want to have the style of the test you copy it let's paste it in notepad then from notepad you can copy it to the web document to see now you can save image from the web page so you right click you choose save image as if you want to copy to you can right click and copy the image as well okay so that is the end of the course so if you have any issue you know where you Contact me. So you just log in to your WeChat 
accounts. Then on the home page, you will see chat with an instructor. So you can send me a message and then I can also reply. So then I think that's it for the course. So I believe you enjoy the course. So I'm the same person will be teaching the office to you. So I hope you take that course and hope to see you in the office to course. Have a lovely day. Bye.